Never mind those Hollywood movies of super ants and other creatures scaled up to huge sizes. An ant is strong for its size, it can lift many times its own weight, and with ease. But if it were scaled up to the size of an elephant, it wouldn't be able to lift itself off the ground. Its legs would be too thin to support its weight. There is a physics reason for a creature's body size being environmentally correct. Well, physics with some geometry, which together tells us that as the size of an object increases, it gains weight faster than it gains strength. You can support a toothpick horizontally at its ends and notice no sag, but support an entire tree trunk of the same wood horizontally at its ends and you'll notice an appreciable sag. Relative to its weight, the toothpick is much stronger than the tree. The explanation involves the concept of scaling, the study of how the size and volume of an object affect the relationship of its strength, weight, and surface area. Strength relates to the area of the cross-section, which is two-dimensional and for small things is often measured in square centimeters. Here I show the cross-section of the tree trunk by coloring it red. Weight, however, relates to volume, which is three-dimensional and again for small things is often measured in cubic centimeters. To understand this relationship, consider the simplest example of a solid cube of matter, one centimeter on the side say, a sugar cube. And we'll compare this with a cube of the same material that has double the linear dimensions, a cube two centimeters on each side. Let's look at the length, the cross-sectional area, and volume for these two cubes. First, the length of the small cube is one centimeter, has a cross-sectional area of one square centimeter, and a volume of one cubic centimeter. For the two centimeter long cube, the cross section is two by two or four square centimeters. And can you see that its volume is eight cubic centimeters? The cross sectional areas are the same as the areas of the top surfaces, which I color red. Suppose the mass of the small cube is one gram. Since the cubes are the same material, can you see that the mass of the larger cube is eight grams? That's eight times greater than the mass of the smaller cube? I hope so. Mass and weight are directly proportional, so 8 times the mass means 8 times the weight. Cross-section area relates to strength, volume to weight. Although I showed the simple example of a cube, the principle applies to an object of any shape. Let's relate what we're discussing to an ant scaled up by a factor of 2. Would the twice-sized ant be twice as strong and be able to lift itself with twice the ease? The answer is no. Although it's twice as thick legs would have four times the cross-sectional area and be four times as strong, it would be eight times as heavy. For comparable effort, it would be able to lift only half its weight. Relative to its new weight, the ant would be weaker than before. Now let's look at a cube scaled up to three times the linear dimensions, a three by three by three cube. Its cross-sectional area is 3 times 3, or 9 centimeters squared, again colored red. We label its length, cross-section, volume, and mass. Let's do a check here and apply the larger cube to our ant again. If you were to triple the length of the ant while keeping its proportions the same, by how much would you increase the cross-section of its legs? Did you say by 3? No, no, no. Area increases by 3 squared, by a factor of 9. Okay with that? So its legs would have 9 times more cross-sectional area and 9 times more strength. Does this mean the ant could lift 9 times as much weight? Yes. Now what would be the increase in weight of the squaled up ant? Did you say increased by 3 cubed? That is, by 27? Yes, indeed. So its weight would increase by 27 times. Would the ant be stronger? In a way, yes, for it could lift nine times as much weight. Stronger compared with its weight? No. Relative to its new weight, the ant would be weaker than before. Its strength compared to its new weight would be one-third what it was before the scale-up. 
If we continued scaling up the size of the ant, we'd soon find it couldn't stand up. Such an ant would need disproportionately thicker legs. So we see that there's a reason for the thick legs of an elephant, a hippopotamus, or a rhinoceros. But what of creatures that don't stand on legs? Creatures in the sea, for example. The weight of a whale or fish is supported by buoyancy. So a scaled-up sea creature would be stronger with its increased weight not a problem. And we see that big fish indeed are stronger and do swim faster than small fish. Being big is advantageous to sea creatures. So we see that Earth's creatures have a size that is proper for the environment in which they inhabit. If Earth's gravity were different, the sizes and proportions of Earth's creatures would correspondingly be different. Nature follows rules. Some of those rules are what we call physics. Yum to that. I want to leave you with two questions. Consider a one cubic centimeter cube scaled up to a cube 10 centimeters long on each edge. Question 1. What would be the volume of the scaled up cube? Question 2. What will be the cross-sectional surface area? Think about that. More on scaling in the next screencast. Until then, good energy. Mm -hmm.